Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. I assume you didn't know that I played the violin. No, I didn't. Well, I really don't. As you can see. <laughs> Does that give you a clue as to what we're going to investigate today? Violins? <laughs> well, I think if we were going to investigate violins, we could come up with a better one than that. Here's another clue over here. Um, with his chalk. This is what we're going to investigate. Squeaks. <laughs> That's what we're going to investigate, squeaks. Now, what makes the chalk squeak like that? Friction, I guess. The rubbing of uh, the chalk against the board. Okay, very good. Now, would you erase it, please? Okay. Matter. Why are you stopping? Uh-oh. Matter. I know why you want me to erase it. Why? Because I'm rubbing now and there's no... No squeak. No squeak. Right. So there must be more to squeaks uh, in this friction business than just plain rubbing, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. one squeaks, the other doesn't. Well, that's what we're going to investigate today. Uh, friction. And strange enough, there are, there are more than one kind of friction. Really? Yes. And we'll find out what makes things squeak. Uh, to do that, come on over here. I have a block of wood sitting on uh, this stuff. You recognize what that is? Sandpaper? Yes, a piece of sandpaper from a belt sander. And uh, here is the block of wood mm -hmm. that is attached to a rubber band. Now, you turn the, this uh, thing on. This will go around. Okay? Uh -huh. Okay, now stop it. And we can put this piece of wood on here like this, and of course, it's going to stick and be pulled. Now, what will happen? You want to go around there and okay. tell me what will happen when we turn it on? Well, when you turn it on, this will stop moving, and the wood will somehow, like, go along with it. Yeah. And it'll just travel to a certain point, and then it'll just stop, I think, when uh, the rubber band and this would be more or less like equal distance. So you say that the rubber, it'll that just stop. it's going to go along here until it reaches a certain point like this, and then it's going to stay stops. right there, held there by the rubber band. Uh -huh. That's what you think? Yes. Okay, well, that's what you think. Let's get it. What's happening to it? Let me turn it up a little more. Or down a little. Okay, did it do what you thought it was going to do? No, it didn't. Well, halfway. Why? It went up, but then I guess the rubber band pulled it back down. Mm -hmm. And then it kept going back and forth. Yeah, why? Because this kept moving, pulling it. Well, the reason it did this is because there are two kinds of friction. Mm -hmm. You come on around over here because I'll, I'll uh, you have two pieces of wood up here that pretend that they're, they're down here. Would you go up there so oh, I okay. compare this to this like that? Here are the two kinds of friction. One is called starting friction. Now let's pretend that this is this piece of uh, uh, sandpaper. Mm -hmm. It has bumps on it. Let's pretend that this is the block of wood. Now, in spite of the fact that the bottom of the block of wood would feel soft, it's really full of little tiny bumps. Yes. So now, when we put these two together, you can see that, that they, some of these bumps fit into each other, don't they? See that? Mm -hmm. This one? See how they fit? And it would be hard yes. to move. So scientists describe it this way. One is starting friction. And in order to get something to move, you have to overcome and get it out of those bumps. Once you get it started, however, they say, now let's call this sliding friction because it's a lot easier. Watch. Once I get it started, now it moves along relatively easily. So that's the other kind of friction, sliding friction. But wouldn't it get caught in each little hole? Well, not necessarily. Once it gets going, see, it, it, it has some motion, so it goes up and out see, oh. and continues this way. Now, the, star, the sliding and st or starting and sliding, the... Uh, our friction are both illustrated with this block. When it's there and we start turning this thing on, see how it's it has starting friction to overcome first. Mm -hmm. Once the starting friction 
has been overcome by the stretch of the rubber band, then what kind of friction are we measuring? Sliding. The sliding, because then it slides along until the sliding friction is just counteracted by the rubber band. Could it go all the way like that? No, because as soon as the sliding friction and uh, this thing are equal, the tension of the rubber band, then it would stop. Oh. Especially when it's continuous. So you've got to have that sliding friction all the time. Uh -huh. yeah. You could go like this and you could pull it all the way back here and you could get it shooting all the way across the room. <laughs> uh, but you have to be having counteracted with a sliding friction. So we are measuring these two, really. One is a measurement now of the... In fact, which do you think uh, these two is greater? We're going to measure them both, but why don't you take a guess beforehand? Which is greater, the sliding friction or the starting friction? Well... Maybe the starting? Well, here, here we can try it. Here is a, uh, a broom straw. I've got another one. Here, take the thicker one. Okay. Here's the broom straw. I'll get this, say, sitting like, like that. Now you touch it. <laughs> touch it with the broom straw to just overcome starting friction. See, once you overcame it, you see how much it moved? Uh -huh, and I didn't even push it. Hardly I touched, it. touched it. So which do you think is greater? Well, the starting. Yeah, the is starting friction. Try it again. See if that was a mistake the first time. Yeah. Once you overcome the starting friction, then the sliding friction, uh, you know, took place all during this whole mm -hmm. area right here. Okay, let's actually chart this now. And in order to do that, let's make some measurements. Before we do, notice that this block has three surfaces. Yes. One here. One there. One here. One there. And one there. One there. Okay. Which do you think now is going to have the most friction, or is it all going to be the same, or what do you predict will happen? We turn on the machine and measure how far it, the block moves when it's in this position, and how far does it move when it's in that position? Well, I think when it's in this position, you know, like, like this? down, yeah. like that. Well, that's... I'd say around like twice as big as the other position. Yes. So it should go like, well, further, twice further. as further. Okay. <laughs> twice as further. Uh, twice as far. Twice as far. Well, let's try the small one first, like this. Okay. Um, and I have a chart so that you can keep track. Oh, I, I, when I made up the chart, I put the large one first. So let's start with the large one. Okay. Here's your pencil up here, see? Now, I see I put a... Um, uh, ruler along the side here, yes. so we can keep track of it. And because the rubber band should be kept parallel to the surface, I have two hooks on here so that we're sure that rubber band is parallel. Now when I turn it on, if you use the back end here to, to measure it, you find out how far it goes, maybe up to seven inches or so. See? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep track of it until you get where it'll go. Then you transfer right. the seven over here like this. And then on the same line, transfer how far it goes on this side, okay. oscillating here. Right. This is the measurement of starting of friction, starting. or, and this That's is the measurement of sliding. sliding. Scientists sometimes call it slip and stick, too. <laughs> slip and stick. Okay, let's try it. Okay, what is it on that side? Well, around 10. 9 or 10, okay. Mm -hmm. 9 or 10. Right there, right? Okay, that's 10, all right. No, there. Okay, put it there. Okay, now we're going to try it. Now measure it where it stops on the other side. Fifteen, 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 fifteen. So I am fifteen. It's around fifteen. On the same line now. Find fifteen. Right about there. Okay, now I join those two with a nice thick line so we okay. can see how far apart they are. Now, what does that one represent? Uh, this is the the, large. the largest okay. side. Now you said, and I want to quote you if possible that you thought this being half the size of that would not go as far. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this line should be shorter next time. Put down ten. Right there. Twelve, thirteen. Let, let it get going, oscillating oh, okay. good. There, now it's up. Fourteen. A little more than 14? Yes, it is more than 14. Just 14 and a half. Yeah, 14 and a half or almost 15 or sometimes. Uh -huh. Okay, put it down. 14 and a half, 15. Uh, all right. There. Now join those two. Uh-oh. Matter. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought when it was on the long way, it'd go twice as much. Mm -hmm. 
But it went the same. Yes. In fact, you thought you thought that this line should say go about Correct. from there to there, yes, didn't it? Yes. And it did. It went exactly uh -huh. the same. Now, what kind of conclusions do you come to as far as the effects of area on friction? It doesn't matter the what the uh, size of it is, mm -hmm. the width or the length. Yeah. It has friction the will same be the same. Effect. And this is exactly what scientists find out too when they measure it. The area doesn't seem to make much difference. Gee. However. If we put this on here like this, we now know what our measurements are, don't we? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to add this weight. Mm -hmm. Now what should happen? Well, I don't think it'll go as far. Because I think there's more like pressure pushing down on it. So you don't think it'll go as far? or you, In other words, you think it'll stick here better or not? Yes. It'll stick so it'll go further. Wait a minute. No, there's more weight, so I don't think it'll go as far. Okay, that's what you think. Let's try it. Six, six, five, six, six. Round six. Five, six and five. Yeah. Five and a half or six. Around there, right? Yeah. Now, how about the other side? Fifteen, fourteen, 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 around there, fourteen or fifteen. Let's, let's say around there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and do... Should I join them? No, I just want to see something. Go ahead. It's about fourteen. Okay, now what kind of conclusions do you come to? Well, the weight surely does make a difference. It mm -hmm. goes farther. Yes. In fact, I think if we did this a little more scientifically, this line would not be as high, because I think it would be much closer to this one. It might be down in here. But as we vary this, this, this distance makes, or this angle makes a big difference. And, you know, this is not really very scientific. But you did find what? That it did go longer. Yes. That the, the weight makes a difference. It does make a definite difference, doesn't it? So, therefore, if you want a sandpaper or something, should you get a big piece of sandpaper, or should you push hard? Well, you should push hard. Push hard, yes, because the harder you push, the, the more friction uh -huh. there is. Okay. Okay, now let's look at some of these slip and stick things that are around the house. One of them right. was the thing I was doing when you came in. The, uh... Violin. Uh, violin. Qu <laughs> quote, unquote. Yeah. Now, what's there a slip and stick to do uh, about this? Well, I guess this would be... Oh, don't do that. <gasps> oh, you've ruined it. What have I done? Well, you put your finger on this, uh, the hair on this bowl. And that is death. Why? Terrible. Well, because what you do with the hair on this bowl is you put this stuff on. You know what that shiny, amber-looking stuff is? No. It's rosin. Rosin? Yes. And rosin is sticky. And so you put this rosin all over the hair on the bowl. Now, why do you do that? So it's like the sandpaper? Yes, in other words, so it's all full of little sticky particles, and when you now bow it like this, why, what does it do to the string? Well, it's kind of squeaky. Yeah, it's kind of squeaky. <laughs> well, if you put your fingers on here, you're going to get the oil from your skin on top of the, the rosin, and so you'll make it slip. Oh. So that's why you shouldn't touch the, the hair, you see. You didn't really ruin it, but... Uh, <laughs> in fact, hold the bow for a minute. All right. And I will uh, loosen up this violin string so that we can see the vibrations better. You notice my uh, special tool. Well, it's a homemade thing. You use home tools. Now, this time I'll bow it, and it's much lower frequency, so we can actually see the stick and slip. Now, watch where the uh, bow is. Okay. It's too, too high. Hold it a minute. I want to lower it down even. All right. <laughs> Try that. Well, it's vibrating an awful lot. Yeah, see? In other words, when I first, when I push down with the bow, it sticks. Yes. Right? Just like mm -hmm. the block did. Mm -hmm. Then as I push, pretty soon the, the tension gets so great that it starts to slip. Mm -hmm. And it will vibrates the string as it's slipping. Then it starts to stick again. So it's stick and slip, stick and slip. In fact, uh, instead of looking up here, look down over here where I put this white tape so that you can see the string vibrate. And you watch the effect of the slip and stick. Watch. Okay. See it? Boy, it's vibrating so fast. <laughs> Sounds like a cow, listen. It? <laughs> it does. 
<laughs> so there is a good example of slip and stick. Now, what other instruments in the orchestra use this uh, starting and sliding friction? Oh, that that big thing, you know, where the bass fiddle. You use the bow. Yeah. Yes, that. When you use the bow, not when you pluck it. Not a guitar. No, a guitar doesn't. See, doesn't have the slip and stick. It, you pluck it with a pick or your fingers. Oh. Viol well, and a cello. I guess all instruments that, that you use the bow. bow. Right. That's right. So that means violin, viola, cello, and bass. Mm -hmm. Now, how about the chalk? Well, I... <laughs> kind of squeaky. Now, notice where I'm holding the chalk quite far down here. Yes. If I hold it way up here... Now you can see the slip, stick and slip, can't you? Yes, you can. It's like... well, little dots that you're little making. Dots. In fact, what the dots uh, record is the stick. Uh-huh. And the slip you can't see because it this flips up this way. Uh, you can really hear it too. Mm -hmm. Now as I go down, watch when I hold it down here, watch what happens. Uh, the frequency oh, it increases. Goes much it? Faster. Yeah. Now if I hold it way down here, higher yet. Uh-huh, you get the squeak. It's about as high as I can get it. <laughs> There's a good example of slip and stick. Mm -hmm. uh, you of course can do it this way. You want to try it? All right. Notice you have to hold it at this angle, too. If you change it to this angle, it'll slide, you know, and without the stick and slip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, of course, when you write in blackboard in school and you get it just, just, just the right angle, it uh, drives you crazy because of that high frequency. Um, how about anything else around the house? You know that it's slipping and sticking when it squeaks. Therefore, anything that squeaks... Here's an example of this slip and stick. Can you think okay. of anything? Um, how about shoes, you know? Yeah, squeaky shoes. They squeak. Um, books sometimes, you know, like when you open them, they... Well, they more creak, sort of. <laughs> uh, not really. How about cars when they go around the corner? Uh-huh, when they go on the Sometimes, yeah. Yes. The, evidently the tire is sliding sideways. Mm -hmm. Same thing as the, mm -hmm. as the chalk. Um, I don't know whether you have any of these around the house, but uh, have a bottle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, these are bottles that have a ground glass top on them. See? Yes. Ground here and here. When you put them together, twist them slightly. Listen. Oh, it, it sounds like birds. It's yeah. Such a high squeak. Well, you call me and then I'll answer you. Okay. <laughs> sounds like what a canary type bird. Uh, yes. Just a little pinches, perhaps. Now, why is it making this sound? Oh, well, I guess, well, it's rubbing the glass together. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, there's holes like in the glass because it's not Cause ground. It's, ground. Very it's not well. smooth like this. Mm -hmm. And then what? And then it starts and Stop, skips. Right? Yeah. And like the chalk. Uh -huh. yeah. like Only a much chalk. higher frequency. Uh, there is a bird call uh, that you can buy that's made, uh, doesn't ma it isn't made out of glass, I don't believe, but I know it works on the same principle. You can twist it. Well, probably a more common example of this is... Uh-huh. Uh what? I uh, the hinge. Yeah, rusty hinge. You get them, you know, in the spooky houses and... Old, dusty type, haunted houses. Oh, I don't know. I've had a couple around the house. <laughs> well, My mind's not do. haunted. <laughs> what, what happens? Why do they do that? Well, maybe because they're opening and closing so much, it gets rubbed and, mm -hmm. and scraped. Yeah. And the uh, stop and the slide, you know, and it's great. What do you do about it? Well, you put oil, usually. You do? You mean if don't I put you? oil on here, it'll stop? All right, go ahead. Take that. Here's some oil over here. Let's see if it works. Here. Go ahead. Where do I put it? Well, I wherever it's slipping and sticking. In Where, the middle. In the middle someplace? There. There, maybe? Yeah, in fact, you see that uh, rusty? Uh-huh, it looks very rusty. It is uh, rusty. Okay, put some oil on there. No? Uh, all you have to do is cover it just a little bit. You want 
Try it now? Go ahead, put it together and see if it's... did it. Actually, try it. See that? So you now know where, where was it slipping and sticking? Right in the middle uh, on that uh, As it was rubbing on that because it was full of rust. Now, why did, the, why did the oil do that? Why does oil make things stop slipping and sticking? Well, I guess it makes it smooth. Well, if that's the case, maybe if we made that smooth over here, we could actually show that we could change the readings that we get by putting something that's smooth under there. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Right. How about oil? Well, if we do oil, then it'll get all over the same oh. paper. <laughs> How about this? Wax paper? Wax paper. Why don't you start it again and establish what, where it's going so we remember, and all then right. I'll put the wax paper on. Okay. Wait, let's take the weight off. So it's going from 10 to what, 14? Yes, 14, 15. Okay, you want to stop it? And what do you predict is going to happen now? If I put this on? Well, I guess it shouldn't go as far. In fact, well, it should stop, I guess, like the oil did. The should be no slip and stick. Yep. Well. How do you like that? Almost none, right? There's supposed to be no movement at all. Well, tiny little bit. you see, there's obviously some slip and stick because this wax paper is not a real good lubricant. Uh huh. But it's you not like the oil. Yeah, but the oil. Well, look, there it stopped. Uh huh. Almost. Gee, that's good. Yeah. Gee, you want to stop it? Now, you remember that illustration I had here? Like that, and like this. Mm -hmm. This was the example of slip and stick and friction. But what would we have to do to that now to illustrate? What oil does on here? If we could put something in between these things like this, so that when we moved it along like this, those bumps wouldn't hit each other and it wouldn't go down into those valleys. Well, it wouldn't stop yeah. and slide. So what do you suppose this dark stuff in the middle here represents? Oil. Yes, that represents oil or grease. Or grease. Yeah, uh -huh. or grease. And it could be things like graphite, too, other, anything that lubricates, like wax paper. Wax mm -hmm. would do it. Candle wax that you put on drawers, you know, uh -huh. things like that. Uh -huh. And why doesn't it uh, have any more sliding and starting friction? Because it's smooth, and it's not hitting any of the bumps or Well, anything. in other words, the molecules of oil are rubbing yes, against each other. Yes, it's rubbing on right. the oil. Okay. So that's what oil does, and it gets rid of that slip and stick. Now, you probably don't have a uh, belt sander around the house and pieces of wood like this <laughs> to, to no. do some experiments about slipping and sticking. However, you do have a crayon yes. and a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do many of the same things that we did here today with a crayon and a piece of paper. Here, mm -hmm. like this. Here's a, this is plain ordinary yellow uh, drawing paper. Mm -hmm. And here is a crayon, a mm -hmm. uh, thick one. And if you hold it over the uh, paper like this, just like you did the chalk, look. You get the, the, the stop slipping. and... In fact, come on around here on the other side, because I want to see if I can't get one that really illustrates slip and stick. Okay. By doing the same thing, but pushing a little harder. Mm. There's a pretty good one here. Let me put it in, in the dish so I, so I can show you what I was trying to do, because you can do this at home, too. Notice right here. Yes, it's darker. That's darker, so what does that indicate? Oh, that's the, the start, right? That's the, the sticking the part. Sticking. That ir illustrates starting friction, and the, the uh, deepness of the color will give you some indication of how, how much energy it took to overcome this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now what is this lighter section here? Everything? The sliding. That's the sliding, right. Goes up to here. So there's the sliding, and here's the starting. Now what happens again? It starts again, it yeah. gets stuck, and then it slides Then it slides, and then it stick, sticks. And sli now, what, why doesn't it, why don't you see it here? Well, well let's see if I can show you. As the, as the uh, crayon went along like this, 
Uh, I'm holding it and it's pivoting. So when it when it's through sticking, it goes up in the air this way mm -hmm. and doesn't make any mark. Then oh. it comes back down again. So if you want to actually make a good slip and stick diagram, you should try to keep it down in such a way so that it stays on the paper as much as possible. See like that? Uh -huh. Then you <laughs> then you can see the difference down in here. Yes. Now how did we overcome slip and stick in every, you know, around the house? By putting oil or something like that. On Let's it. put some oil on here. If right. what you say is true, if we put oil on there, what should happen? There was some oil on the, uh, on the, nice on the tray from your oiling the hinge. <laughs> if we, if what you say is true, we should be able to put oil on there and prevent it from sticking and slipping. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. I'll make sure that the crayon is nice and uh, unwaxed. Now watch. Well, it didn't bounce up and down. No, it, it stopped slipping and sticking, didn't it? Straight line. I wipe the crayon off again to make sure. There See that? goes again. So here's a good example now of here slipping and sticking until it came to the oil, the which oil. prevented it from happening, and there you got a nice straight line. So you can do this at home too. And what could you use in place of oil if you don't have any? Wax. Wax, butter, butter. margarine, mm -hmm. lard, mm -hmm. anything that was worked as a good lubricant. You could even try wax paper on the other side. <laughs> So, what is it that determines the frequency, by the way? Remember when we were doing with the chalk, we got a very high frequency and we got a squeak. In oh. case, this case, we don't have a squeak. Oh, uh, the, the farther down you hold it? Well, in other words... The length of the holding it? What was, if we had had the time to, to put a, uh, uh, change the rubber band over there, we would have found that as you put a thicker, stiffer rubber band, the frequency would change and would go faster. The same thing oh. is true here. When you hold it way up, it's a relatively slow frequency. When you hold it way down, it goes faster and faster. In this case, I can't do it because, oh, there it is. See it? Mm -hmm. The frequency is much. In fact, you can do some scientific experiments at home if you like. What you could do is grasp it at a certain height. Grasp it at a certain height and count seconds. And, and then go like this and count how many you did in a second and see. In fact, here, you better practice a little bit. All right, I'll try. I have another one around here someplace. Uh, in <laughs> fact, here, we don't need the dish now. Let's try it this way. You take the long side, and I'll take the short side. So you see the fun you can have experimenting with a crayon and slip and stick. Yep.